Okay, so in this problem we're told how close to the edge of the 24 kilogram table shown in the figure can a 66 kilogram person sit without tipping it over. So imagine this right here is the table and we're given some information about it. We're told, right, this distance here is 2.2 meters. The distance between the two legs of the table are 1.2 meters. And then the distance from this point to the end of the table is 0.5 meters. Uh, and we're also given the height of the table is 0.8. Uh, and then we're given the masses of both the table and our person uh, that's going to be sitting on the table. And what we're trying to find, right, the goal in this problem is to find the distance they can sit away from the edge of the table. So this is the edge, the distance they can sit away without it tipping over. So basically how far they will be able to sit before it tips over. How far from the edge. So uh, how are we going to do this problem? So the way we're going to solve it is by using a uh, right torque. And so the first thing we have to draw is the free body diagram uh, of what's going to be acting on this table here. So there's going to be three forces. The first force is going to be the force due to gravity on our person sitting here. The next force is going to be the normal force, uh, which is going to point out from this uh, leg here, right, due to the ground. And then the last force is going to be the force due to gravity that's going to be acting on the table. And we always take that to be the center of the table. So in this case, the center of the table since it's symmetrical, is just in the middle. So in this case, it's going to be right there. And we know it's going to have a force due to gravity. Uh, keep in mind this one is mtg, right? F equals mg. Uh, and then this one is mpg, right? The mass of the person uh, times gravity. And so now that we have this, uh, the way we're going to solve it is by summing the torque, right? And then we're actually going to set it equal to zero. Now, why are we setting it equal to zero? Well, if we can set it equal to zero, Right, and then we'll set x to be their distance. We'll find the point at which uh, this distance x will be where it won't tip. So basically, if we sum it, we'll find the max value of x such that it will still be zero. Um, and yeah, so uh, we're going to sum the torque. So you need another formula for torque. Torque is equal to uh, force times distance times the sine of theta. So f is the force that's going to be applied. Uh, distance is the distance away from the point of rotation, right? So in this case, the thing you gotta know is we're gonna be rotating about this axis. So this person, when they get far enough, eventually they'll tip it over and they'll start falling. And we're gonna rotate about this axis here. So, uh, and not this leg. So you have to know it's about this leg. And the reason is the person's on this side and right before it tips, all the force is gonna be in this leg, right? Cause you can imagine right when it tips, it's only gonna be rotating about this leg Therefore, there's no force acting on this one. So hopefully that makes sense why we're summing it about this point. But it should just be pretty intuitive. Like We're going to be rotating around this point, not this leg. So uh, yeah, so um, we know that the, OK, we're going to solve for the torque for each of these. So another thing you have to know is when you sum up the torque, the direction of it matters. So the torque is obviously going to rotate it. So we know the torque from this one. Let me go into a different color here. The torque due to this one is going to rotate it around this way. And then if you imagine like a, a clock, right, this is uh, counterclockwise. And when you do these problems, if the torque makes it rotate counterclockwise, you choose it to be negative. So this would be negative. And then if you were to rotate it positive, right, which this one will do, it will rotate it clockwise direction. You do it, uh, you, you count it as positive. So when we sum them up and uh, sum them up and add them, if it's clockwise, it's positive. If it's counterclockwise, it's negative. So we're going to want to go ahead and do that now. So there's basically going to be two instances or three instances of torque, but one isn't really going to count. So we have to do all three of these forces. So some of the torque. So what, what are the different instances of torque? Well, we're going to have the torque due to the person. We're going to have the torque due to the normal force. And so I'm just going to add it, but you'll see in a second that it doesn't really make a difference. Uh, and then we have to minus the torque due to the just the uh, table, right? And that's because it goes uh, counterclockwise. So minus, we'll say T of the table. And so what we're going to do is solve for each of these now. So let's start with the torque of due to the person. So as I said before, the formula is force times distance times the sine of theta. So we know the force is going to be equal to... Uh, right, mg, mpg. So mpg, that's the force, right? It's just the force due to gravity. Uh, the distance d is this variable x, right? Because we're going to want to solve for it at the point where it doesn't tip. So that's why we're setting this equal to x. 
So x for the distance, uh, and then the sine of theta. So let me explain what that is now. So theta is essentially the angle between the lever arm and the direction of the force. So we can imagine here that this is the lever arm, and the force is going to be pointing straight down. So the angle between these two is just 90 degrees, right? You can see that there. Uh, and the sine of 90 is just 1. So this would be times the sine of 90, but sine of 90 is just 1, so we can ignore it. Uh, and then we're going to do the torque due to the normal force now. Now this one is actually just easy because notice uh, d is the distance from the point of rotation. So this is where we're rotating about. The normal force is exactly on top of it. Therefore, the distance is 0. So if, the, this, if this is 0, obviously the whole term is going to go to 0. Therefore, no torque or moment is generated as a result of that, um, uh, that uh, force, right? So there's no, nothing due to that. Uh, and then next, we have the torque due to the table. So this one, again, the force is mg, but this is the table's uh, mass times gravity. Uh, and then we have the distance. So what is the distance from here to here, right? The distance to the point of rotation. Uh, so we know that the whole thing is 2.2 .2 meters, and we're essentially finding the center. So we know the center is in between this, so therefore this distance is just 0.6. Right? And if you add 0.5 plus 0.6, you get 1.1, which is half of 2.2, .2, so we know we're in the right spot. So the distance there would just be 0.6. Uh, and then the sine of theta, again, once again, it's just 90 degrees. So it points down, this is this way, therefore it's 90 Sine of 90 is just 1, so we can ignore that. Uh, and then we're just going to sum the torque. So we can add all the values now. So we have mpgx minus mtg.6. So essentially, this force right here, the table, is going to have to be equal to the, uh, right, the torque caused by our person. Right? And when they're equal, that's going to be the maximum value. Because if this x would have been any bigger, then it would be greater whatever we solve for it at. Right? If it was any bigger than that, then it would just tip over. So that's how we're able to do this. So we have mass of the person, gx. If I move this to the other side, you get mtg.6. Right, I want to solve for x. So x is mtg.6 divided by mpg. Notice your g's are going to cancel. Now let's look at the torque for or the mass. Mass of the table is 24. Uh, the other one's 66. So this is what we will have. 24 divided by 66 is 0.363636 times 0.6 gives us 0.218. So your distance x here is 0.2182, uh, we'll say. And notice that they're wanting us to solve for not the distance from the point of rotation, which is what our x value is, but the distance from the edge of the table. So if we wanted to find that, we know our x is 0.2182. 1, 8. Therefore, uh, this whole distance, let me back out here. This whole distance is, oh, it didn't go. This whole distance, right, is 0. 0.5. This distance was 0. 0.218, so we just subtract. Um, and yeah, so we have 0. 0.5. I'll just do it in purple now, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so 0. 0.5 minus that value will give us the distance to the edge of the table. And you'll get 0.2818, so about 2.282. Our distance is going to be in meters. So this is how far it can be for uh, it not to tip. So this is going to be your answer. Just a quick rundown of how we did this. So first thing you have to recognize is the point of rotation. I know we're going to be rotating about this point since the forces are on each of the sides. right? Uh, and it's pretty intuitive that's the case. Uh, and then we know the torque formula. And so what we do is just sum up the torque. Kind of like you do in uh, earlier chapters with summing up the force, uh, but this one is just for rotational stuff. Um, and then, yeah, so you know the torque, you just solve for each of them using this formula, and then we just set them equal to each other, right? Because the normal force is just, it doesn't create, uh, cause a moment. Um, and then, yeah, so you have these two equal to each other. And yeah, so if our x was any greater than this value, right, if it was any bigger, obviously then, or not this x, if this x uh, was any bigger, and this value would be greater than this one, right? And if they're not equal, then it's going to tip over, right? Because this torque would be greater, so we would actually be tipping over. So that's how, why we set them equal and then solved. Uh, but yeah, so 0 0.282 meters, uh, that's going to go ahead and be your answer. And uh, hopefully you found this video useful.